How's it going today, Strowbridge? Good afternoon on this Saturday afternoon. Rainy Saturday afternoon. Rainy for you, snowy for me. Yeah, I, it, the weather's been so interesting. I, it was 40s, kind of fighting between the 40s and the 50s this week. It's rainy now. It's supposed to be in the 50s tomorrow, and then it's supposed to, like, shoot. The temperature's supposed to shoot up here in New Jersey uh, throughout the week, so kind of excited. I get the feeling Punxsutawney Phil's getting his information from the wrong environment or uh, tip nowadays. He's well, he's never... the only one getting the information, so. True. Just kind of feels his way around with it. What do we got yeah. for y'all today, folks? Today, oh, we're talking about robots. We're doing robots. Me, we're talking we're... about our top. It was going to be Boost a top Machina. 10, but. Yeah, we. we uh. We wanted to do a top 10, but we figured a top five would be more uh, appealing. So uh, top five, we're going to give you our top five favorite AI robots that are being spoken, that are spoken of today, pretty much trending. This would be an exciting thing to talk about. Um, have you encountered any AI robots in your lifetime? Uh, I worked, I was a janitor at a middle school uh, a few years ago. And they actually had a robotics class there and they were making stuff there. So at night when I'd be cleaning, this robot club would be in there testing out their um, little robots, you know, like the stuff you'd used to see on that show, Robot Wars and stuff like that. Yeah. But they were oh, they stuff were, like that. Yeah, mostly like that. But they were doing um, early AI, I would say. Cause they were throwing in some other stuff and they're not just like picking up things. It was a, uh, uh, course dexterity stuff like that you know how fast they could go sit through something and those things were pretty freaking fast for as many obstacles that would be on a on a set basically yeah um that's the only example i can think of that i've actually seen but that was pretty impressive i wish they would have had that program when i was in school that's pretty cool. I yeah. I didn't take the I didn't take the class when I was in high school. I was I took I, w I chose film and television broadcast, but there was another class in my high school which was robotics. Really? And Lucky. Yeah. You know, it was it was really cool. Hmm. It was really cool. And I remember this I remember this one guy made like this robotic hand and it worked. I don't, I couldn't tell you too much about it cuz I, I didn't know the guy who made it, but it was so interesting to see the things that they were making. And, you know, before, before 2010. Here we are 24. Wow. It's been a while. Yeah. I want to say uh, the Sophia one that we're going to talk about has probably been around that long since 2010. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's part of the list. Some of them are. Yeah. Well, to uh, to start off, we're gonna let's talk about pepper. Pepper, not what goes with salt. Don't get confused. Yeah. So those who are watching, you're gonna see a little box pop up uh, right next to us, and you're gonna see. So pepper is a really really cool looking robot. It's friendly, it's fun, and approachable. And what's uh, pepper was. The development began in 2014, and it was officially unveiled in the same year. And it's, you know, undergone some improvement, which is really good. Uh, but what Pepper is, we'll talk about the, the appearance and design first. Um, it's very sleek. It's very modern. It has a slight a friendly, approachable humanoid design. And it has, it kind of like when you look at it, it's kind of kind of like, at, like Apple made it, or Disney. I look at them too. At, or Apple or Disney. Very. Yeah. You, the best way I could compare uh, Pepper to is um, Eva from yep. Wally. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, yep, yep, exactly. Yeah, it looks. You know, the, there's a very similar designs, and she, it's a white plastic interior, and she has like these very big eyes. Sleek on the features. Yeah, really cool. And it has a uh, its appearance is non threatening. Again, it's approachable. And you know, you can be a kid and walk up to this 
you know, this this robot and kind of talk to it, you know? You could see this at like every library greeting you as you walk in. Hello, what book would you like to read today? You know, something like that. Yeah. And what's what's really actually really cool about Pepper, um, they have Pepper used in a different array of different things. Um Actually, in Japan, a professional baseball team used a squad of them to cheer on as players when the pandemic kept the team's humans fans at home. Um, that's a really That would be cool. cool looking. I'd like to see um, that. Some, yeah, some of its capabilities, though, is that <clears throat> it's equipped with a wide range of sensors, cameras, microphones, and speakers that, you know, enable it to understand its environment. And it recognizes faces and voices where to a point that it's able to engage with like a natural language selection to be able to talk to you, you know, and on top of that, it understands multiple languages and dialects. So it's, it's super adaptable as well. I think that is really, I think that's really cool. That's another really cool feature, but it also has an emotional intelligence where one of its distinctive feature, it has the ability to recognize it and respond to human emotions while looking at you. Right. You know, you know, recognizing through facial expressions, the tone of your voice, um, the language that you're using emotionally, Body language, yeah. and it, yeah, and it uses this emotional intelligence to put together responses and behaviors. You know, it kind of reads like an algorithm. Uh, some of the applications it has super diverse settings, so. You can have this in a retail store where it can assist customers with product information. It can give you recommendations and even help you with some purchasing decisions, you know, to kind of help you save money. Maybe you're there to spend money. Mm -hmm. um, they even use Pepper for healthcare. It serves as a companion for patients. It provides entertainment, like you can watch movies, a companionship, which which is also that would be much important. needed, like a, like a dog. Yeah. Like a dog. And and it's and I can think about this too because you have like emotional support animals, but there are a lot of people who are allergic to the to the animal furs and cats, the yeah, dander. And like that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you won't get that with pepper. You know, and it and it also it will remind you for medication your medication times or your appointments and in education pepper can be used as a teaching assistant helping students learn new concepts through interactive lessons and activities so for developers um, i'm pretty sure that they're curious about this um to create custom applications for pepper and to oh, you can also make the behaviors and I guess emotes is the word that we use today. It allows businesses and orga organizations to manipulate Pepper's functionality to their to their needs and use and mm -hmm. use cases. Um, there are ethical considerations, like any AI. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah but particularly in terms of privacy, data security, um, impact on human employment, and there are important topics for discussion, especially as humanoid robots like Pepper become more prevalent in society. And I I, I just want to put it out there. There's just some people who don't want to work. Yeah. You know, especially really? and, and no. yeah, and there's and you know, you even have like the retail space. Like the re the retail space is not you know, it's not for the it's not evolving with everything else in the world. So that's why it's yeah, yeah, it's like a dinosaur. It's like the malls, you know, they're dying out because it's just it's no one goes to them anymore. Just I don't know. Yeah, and I just think that this this specific bot does represent a not a need, but a way that we're able to integrate technology yeah. into our into our everyday life and kind of like mesh yeah. it together you know and I, I i you know we have plenty of them out there it's working pepper is out there um it's kind of like a i steward. think this is a beautiful yeah and that was pepper um number our next one on the list is robonaut 2 robonaut 2 and if my memory perceives me this is the cool looking one uh from NASA, yes. From NASA, NASA. and General Motors. And General yeah, Motors. Absolutely. 
the two powerhouses combined and came out with this robot, <clears throat> which was uh, basically uh, designed to help uh, aboard the uh, IESS, the International Space Station, which this is all news to me. And he's been around for, these have been around for a minute. Uh, yes, yeah, it's the early 2000s. Yeah. I never, until now, this is new to me. Uh, they're pretty good at uh, augmenting the crew's capabilities, increasing efficiency through the space stations. So uh, I imagine, you know, you, uh, the astronauts that are up there, they're already pretty spot on about their uh, efficiency and stuff. But uh, just to have an AI around to add even more efficiency to it, that'd be crazy to me. Yeah, they're already on. They're already on top of their game. So, uh, they were designed to have a humanoid upper torso and arms, with uh, basically manipulators to look like hands. They're not like I don't believe they're five digits. I don't have the picture of them up with me, uh, but it allows them to perform tasks that would normally require human-like dexterity and stuff like that, picking up things, uh, moving around the the station and stuff like that. Um, they're uh, equipped with advanced ses sensors and cameras, much like the uh, Pepper. Um, their systems uh, perceive the environment and interact with objects. Its uh, hands have a high degree of mobility and can manipulate tools and equipment yeah. designed for humans. So they could possibly even do uh, uh, small scale surgery or even, I was thinking, repairs like that humans can't get inside of machinery or stuff like that. That's what I was thinking of. Um, and like John said, they've been around since the early 2000s. Uh, yes. Yeah, so Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So from what I'm reading, so the concepts are dating back from the early 2000s and the develop the development of R2 began in 2007. Um, it was shown off in 2010, but the first version was developed earlier, but R2 represented a significant advancement in terms of capability and design. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and also, th this, this uh, also on, on, um, on the unveiling, which happened in 2010, it marked an official introduction of the humanoid robot to the public and showcased abilities to the media and the scientific community. Um, but it, ever since then, it's been involved in various research in both space and Earth. It's a, it's a really cool design. It has like that bulky astronaut torso and like that really cool helmet. It's a little more humanoid. Um, but it's been routinely used no. since the early 2000s. It still blows my mind. I, I read that and I'm just like, yeah. and I, this is new to me. Yeah, but it is not more humanoid than no. number three. No. Talk to talk to me about number three. Number who three. is which is Sophia. Sophia. Which is Sophia by Hanson Robotics. Yep. Now Sophia is the only one on this list that we were going through earlier that I was like I know about her because she has been on the news enough to uh, where I recognized her and maybe the reason for that is she's a little newer than say the NASA one and NASA has been around like since early two thousands. Uh, she got her citizenship in 2017. That tells you how yeah, on a different Saudi path, Arabia, on a different path that Sophia took in the uh, AI realm. Uh, she's isn't really this the one that isn't this the one that was saying something about like nuclear warfare in the end oh, of the world? Yeah. Is this the one? The, this is the one. I think it was. Uh, it's been on. I want to say it was on the Jimmy Fallon show. Conan. It's been on a few night shows. Uh, yeah, it's been shows. on Jimmy Fallon. Yep. Um, she played rock, paper, scissors and said something about like how much she hates nacho cheese. And she'll make really weird uh, facial features, too, that are kind of, you know, for a robot, just scary looking. She's very uh, yeah. human female looking like. Uh, I believe she's just an upper torso unless they gave her a full body. I don't remember exactly. Uh, uh, from what I understand, it's it's more just the upper torso. Yeah. Yeah. OK. But she's she was very. I'm just going based on my memory now, not what I've really read. But uh, she was very articulate of of videos I've seen of robots speaking to the public. She was probably the most articulate one at the time. Um, her her role is basically just kind of like that. Her roles in uh, public appearances and demonstrations, uh, you know, giving a, a positive side to AI 
by interaction with her. She's uh, uh, very uh, communicative. Communicative. She, uh, yeah. you can ask her questions and stuff like that. I remember, I mean, she's been on night shows and they've asked her stuff and yeah. Um, she's had Very some, cool. uh, Very criticism cool. though, uh, about the ethical implications, ep- ethical implications of humanoid robots and their potential impact on society and employment. But haven't they all, you know? Every... But this one doesn't really like the thing about about this bot though is that it's not it's not working. It's not doing a job. It's not making no. it's PR food or providing a service. Yeah, it's 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 a again like a PR. stewardship. It's and, you know it's like an it's bringing two worlds together kind of by having these introductory yeah. robots, if you will. Yeah, it's it's super interesting because this one, this specific bot doesn't seem to be doing anything that is not in a while. progressive to our society. Yeah. And 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 when I mean that, Novelty. like we talked about Pepper. We talked about Pepper, who is essential to society. Robonaut too, essential. Sophia kinda kinda on the borderline there. But the reason why Sophia is on this list because we have to recognize how incredible the technology that is used that was used to create Sophia and mm-hmm. the technology that it continues to become, I guess is the right thing to say. Um, but while cool. we're speaking of services and giving something to the society, because again, we have the next one is Kaim by yep. Mako Robotics. Now, what's super cool about Kaim is that he serves. I'm saying he. Um, it serves mm. beer, coffee, cocktails. K- Kame? Is that That's, how it's pronounced? Kame? That sounds right, if I remember. Um, inf- infusions, juice, bottled drinks, snacks. It has a cake shop with pastries, and it serves a salad. And, and it's salad. a humanoid bartering kiosk it's literally it services food and beverage uninterrupted um so it has it has really cool stuff right so it could serve two beers every six seconds for 24 hours a day seven days a week and it has up to 12 different products per kiosk and if you buy this it's plug and play Mm -hmm. i actually wouldn't be surprised if um someone in, in like some shops in new york have this so the user experience that it has, and this is coming from the website itself, um, has realistic e- expressions and movements, attraction of new clients, orders by APP or by touchscreen, and up mm-hmm. to 10 different languages. Um, for It also has a section here for food safety, avoid unnecessary contact, made with antimicrobial materials, and the pollution-free space. Hmm. That's... Another big thing, food safety. Um, I was a I was a cook in the military, so learning about so you food know, safety, yeah. you learn some of the things. Yeah, cross contamination is is a real thing, and I'm not exactly. trying to sound like a scientist or an expert no. about it, but like when it comes to food, I mean, I, I I don't eat great as it is, but I I I know that it's there by is choice. Some bad stuff in yeah. our food. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, oh, yeah. there's Definitely. some bad. There's some bad stuff that's getting in our food that was not supposed to be part of the recipe in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, what, next one has high quality service and control over sales. So it, it monitors sales data constantly, online customer support, smart ERP integration, and, integra- and an integrated payment system. And you could put this in restaurants and pubs, hotels, dining rooms, bars and pubs, gas stations, uh, cent- centers, commercial centers, theme parks, I was thinking rest airports, stops, stadiums. Rest stops would be. I would awesome put in. I would put in a. I would put in a school. Yeah. Yep. You know, and and it's got it's got a really an, a really approachable look to it. It's a white robot. The arms are very. You could see it in the in the photo that I have showing now. And it's just very welcoming. It's got the Eva eyes too from Wally. I really like this robot. I'd love to have one for myself, to be honest with you. Um, but now we're up to our number one robot. You know, I just keep thinking too, like everybody's like feels threatened with this stuff as far as jobs. 
but the jobs that it would take over and the word is take over is wrong because it wouldn't be taking over anything that's already there for the humans i feel like it would invent a whole different what's the word for that uh, another whole unit of work that isn't here because the humans haven't thought of it but we got ai for it now yeah. and we can utilize it so we're not really stealing that's jobs right. as they say they are not stealing jobs we're just we are creating new ones just yep. we never had and to deal with them this and, and so you had you knew you knew about Sophia before yeah. getting getting into the episode, and the num- our number one is Atlas from Boston Dynamics. So this one I've actually been keeping an eye on the last year and a half, if not longer. And so it's uh, it was developed by Boston Dynamics, a robotics com- a robotics company known for its advanced and often dynamic robotic creations. Uh, it's very mobile. It's very flexible. It can. It's very fast, and it's actually pretty insane. Saying how quick it moves, uh, Strobridge. I suggest you just look at YouTube real quick and type down Atlas Boston Dynamics, so you can see this thing move. Oh, I've seen um, this. Uh, there's even been a couple movies that have kind of ripped him off it off a little bit. I'm, it's yeah. not District Nine, or is it? It's the one where the robot kind of has its own soul, not short circuit, but I'm thinking of like District Nine or it's the other movie that was well, like District, that. District Nine was more like aliens too, but there was some robotics. In yeah, there it wasn't that one. That it was involved. the other one yeah. like that. Anyways, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll find out. We'll figure it out. But Atlas. it's really cool. It's very flexible, and it has its design is to resemble the proportions and movements, literally, of a human being, and it's. When it moves, it has it has a lot of I guess you could say joints, a lot of foldable parts where it's able to maneuver leap. easily, especially and leap too. Yeah, uh, this it has a bipedal structure and that allows it to move like a human with these arms and legs that it has, and it is equipped with these sensors that that helps them like keep balance. <laughs> And which also helps them navigate through complex environments. So let's say if, if there's like a plank or something. Yeah, I, I've seen the video too where they've had the little side steps and you can see it go to side to side, moving, you know. Yes, there That's you go. That's what you're talking about? Yeah. Yep. It's, it's, it's amazing. It is amazing. And, it, and it, the way that it, like the hands, you know, it... It can open doors. It could pick up wood. It could pick up tools. It could, you know, I, I think that was one of the cool things that I showed too, that it was lifting up a bag of like construction material and it would, it would throw the bag on the next level of the platform it was supposed to go in and then climb up or jump up into the next one. platform. That's cool. Yeah. It, it's really incredible. Um, it can be, it can be operated by a human but it also has it, it is it is also autonomous it, it mm-hmm. is it is aware it is awake so it's not just completely operated by a human um it uh, they do let it stand on its own two feet quite literally uh but they give it a chance to they give a chance for atlas to study its surroundings to be able to figure out what the next move is in a scenario um, I could actually see uh, super, super interesting. So in Fallout, the Mr. Handy robots, um, in the lore timeline, there is a section where there was an earthquake in a certain part of the world, mm-hmm. and they used the Mr. Handy robots to help rebuild, help reconstruct the area and stuff like that. And I really feel like that Atlas is the best candidate to help with natural disasters like earthquakes or floods especially for those who for humans who are not capable of going into certain areas that <clears> are too <throat> dangerous or too risky or just atlas shape it's 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 built like a human so it can bend stoop lift it, but it has better capabilities yeah, I, than a normal human yeah, and, and i feel like that this is like a plus for society this is right. essential this is helpful to society this can be something for the future and it's it's amazing uh but you know know, it serves what say again 
Oh, I was going to say, do you remember the, the dog-looking robot ones that are kind of like this? Are they cousins to Atlas? Are they any affiliation with, you know what I'm talking about, right? The dog-looking ones? That I actually, I, I think I think Boston Dynamics actually made that one, too. Oh, I want to say, yeah, because it looks yeah, they similar. Did. Okay, that makes sense, then. Spot. Yep. Spot, yeah. He's another one. They don't yeah, have him on there, do they? He wasn't on the 22. We did... We did not. We did not even put them in our five. But everyone yeah. knows who Spot is, and Spot Everybody. is. I mean, Spot's amazing. Mm -hmm. There really, there is no. You can't take away the things that what you can't take away what Spot is or what Spot has done. Uh, I guess. I guess you could put that as a honorable mention. Spot, right? Grandfather. Yeah, been around him. You know, yeah. I know again, they wanted to use him in the military. For packing, yeah, uh, I think they like do. I think, I think they do actually. Mm -hmm. I think they do. Uh, but but again, you know, these were out of four of them. One of them was, in my personal opinion, unessential, but critical to the study of artificial intelligence in our in the modern times right now. Um, I'm, this this was a really cool list that we came up with. I kind of think of them like and books. Yeah. They all serve a a purpose that would combine end up being a great thing i don't know i i i understand what you're saying fill in the cracks but basically guys, yeah thank you yeah, well guys remember um we appreciate you guys coming every week to see your favorite non-scientist enthusiast you know phds in that we're yeah you know we, we're not the we didn't create the things, but we want to understand it more, and we're more than happy to be enthusiasts and talk to you guys about the positive side of artificial intelligence. Um, do you have anything for the people before we go? Uh, <clears throat> for me, this week was kind of slow on the AI news, so if anyone has um, information on that, feel free to send that to us. You can have our emails. Um, send us anything. Yeah. I'd like to do more of these top, these top five, top tens. It seems to be a, a like trend right now just with, you know, because there's, like we were saying, different arrays of AI. So there's more of them in each kind of quirk that we can talk about. Yeah. Because it'll be like, well, there's five of this representation. And then in this field, there's another five for this. So we can do that. That's what's nice about it. Agreed. Absolutely. Well, we'll see you guys in a few weeks, two weeks time. We're sorry we're a little late on this one. Uh, but we are always here. Thank you so much. Make sure you guys check out www.cleansanchezmedia.com for all merchandise. Um, the official artificial mind store is there. So thank you so much. Say la vie. Adios. And drink water. Drink water. You get Charlie horse. <laughs>